Time check, it is some 34 minutes past the hour of nine. You're still live here on 3 FM Sunrise. On 3 FM 92.7, it's a glorious Tuesday morning. It is also World Radio Day. A happy, happy World Radio Day to our wonderful 3 FM Sunrise community. I say this each and every morning. We do this in tandem with you because we really do. You are our third co-host. We don't take your company for granted at all. But it is time for Woman Premier. I've got a very special Woman Premier in the studio. The very smiley Joel Thompson is here. Joe, how are we doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. You're in you're in good spirits. I am. It's 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 a, a good day, a blessed day, I feel it. Okay, you yeah. feel it in the spirit. I feel it in the atmosphere. <laughs> in the atmosphere. <laughs> are you working today? Um so yes, today I am working. So right after here I'm going back okay. to my lovely students. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well tell us about about your lovely students, what you do. Tell us everything. Oh, love it, love it, love it. So uh, my name is Jewel Thompson and so by day I am a lecturer of entrepreneurship and innovation at a University ah. and so that is the full-time gig as far as understanding entrepreneurship the entrepreneurship ecosystem here um, and of course contributing as best as I can through research um, but outside of that uh, more of the reasons why you have me here is just my keen interest in not only learning and teaching entrepreneurship but actually being an entrepreneur so mm. I consider myself somewhat of an omni Entrepreneur. It's a An new omnipreneur. Word. Omnipreneur. It's a okay. new word we learn in every day. Um, just because. I not only uh, focus on how I can support businesses, but also building the ecosystem here. So I have a platform called Women uh, Awa. So it's for uh, African women, particularly in West Africa, which mm. is African Women Amplified. African Women, women amplified. amplified. Okay. Yes. And with this particular platform, it serves as an intermediary for women entrepreneurs who are in need of technical skills, capacity development, funding, and access to different resources to support them. And so on this platform, you'll see the side where you have mentors, you have potential funders, and then women who are able to also build their profiles on the platform as well. Um, and so that's another way in which of saying, what can we build um, to support the growing economy here of women entrepreneurs? Um, and then another tech platform that I focus on with one of my former students is called Lyft which is leveraging Lift. intuitive technology for health in Africa. And this came about because um, as a former student, I had noticed kind of her despondency in class at a point. And it was because she was actually dealing with anxiety and a little bit of depression. Okay. And we have on school like psychotherapists to support students. And so what it made me realize was the fact that it wasn't just her, but a number of students who were dealing with this, especially when they're high performers. Mm. And so we were trying to think of what could be a solution or something to support students um, who are suffering or struggling, particularly because mental health or challenges with mental health is like stigmatized um, on the continent. You know, That's a lot right. Of and especially even here in Ghana, the resource are just not enough because the World Health Organization mandates that countries allocate something like 15% of right. their health resources exactly. to mental health and I think health experts will tell us we're oscillating between maybe 1%, 2%, yes. maybe even less. Yes, far oh, less oh. and so essentially what you're finding is just traditional methods um, when it comes to resolving mental health which usually involve heavy medication, mm. right? Um, and then some people provide the therapy. There's a few that I know that are really phenomenal um, working here but it's they're limited as well in their That's capacity. Right. So how do we provide you know support especially for those that are young and exposed to more technology um, where they have a lot of challenges you know mm. when you see what people are doing on the internet etc it can impact you that's right um, as well so we developed um, or we're in the process of getting into the second iteration of like an AI supported type of um, tool to support students um, and then also entrepreneurs um, who are dealing with high performance challenges and connecting them to psychotherapists who can help them through the use of cognitive behavioral therapy all the big words right i was about to say <laughs> a um, prof is is, is in the building it's happening right so you know this is something that we're excited about um and, and recently got some funding for to expand oh that's exciting yeah, okay we, we went through a health accelerator here that was uh led by lafia um as well as impact hub 
Okay. And so um, we went through that and ended up coming up on the top with our idea. And so they funded just kind of the next iteration of us mm. incorporating the machine learning um, to actually train our model, um, which starts off with like a chat bot so that there's something people can talk to. Okay. Right I was platform. going to ask, what does that look like practically? And I'm, I'm very keen on mental health. It's something that's very dear to my heart and um, whenever I hear that somebody's doing something to enhance the resources we have as far as mental health is concerned, I get super excited. And people often want to know about uh, some of the maybe funding um, avenues available in Ghana and sometimes until I have a woman premier here yeah. who's mentioning that, I think people often don't know where to look. You right. know, with a project like that, so you have the idea, mm -hmm. you collaborate with the student, um, is it because of your positioning that you know about these things or do you have to actually see out some of these interventions that's the challenge right you mm. have to seek a lot of these things out they don't come to you and okay. I think that's the challenge in Ghana is that there isn't a particular resource hub that mm. everyone knows where it is because Ghana idea, is idea, exactly idea, idea idea yeah and, and I mean that's really what we're trying to do even with the our platform mm. right is how do we centralize all of this information because Ghana is not just a cry you have that's a right. lot of people in the rural areas in town who don't get access to this and what happens is that you have our hub Right. There is mm. the Ghana Hub Network that exists here that are trying to facilitate like how we fill in these gaps um, for people that are in more rural areas. But there are still going to be people that miss the mark that just don't know what's available to them. That's because right. Because you have funding resources or programs coming from ABSA, Standard Chartered that are doing their part in their attempt to connect with those who are, you know, intermediaries and providing those support services and then them finding a way to reduce the amount of interest on loans so that people can actually actually take out things without having to have collateral, which mm. a number of entrepreneurs here who are particularly in the informal sector do not have. That's right. Right. And so we need more of that, more conversations, more opportunities for people to recognize what is available because already you have about five conglomerates from the European Union who have committed over $80 billion for the next five years to Africa to mm. fund specific, like, 80 billion. 80 billion. So the funding is out there. It's you out just there. need to know where you to look. You need to know where to look. And mm. um, you have a number of resources that are here. And I mean, these are external resources coming in. And what you have, like, with Wangara Capital and Accra Angels are local um, funders trying to come together to figure out a funding instrument for uh, for us and by us, mm. right? Because a number of the things that are flowing in are external. That's right. right. And so that also comes with the stipulations and then that's also the challenges that we have because people will fund us according to their models. That's right. And it doesn't quite work for us all the time. Mm. Um, our scaling capacity is different. It doesn't fit the same way that it does in the West. Mm. Like they throw money at a unicorn venture and expect it to blow up and then they can exit the company. But it doesn't work like that here. It's slower. Right? That's a very interesting perspective because right. you think about funding, but you don't actually think about the, like you say, the steps, which right. could be very different to the model that some of these funders are, are used to, have envisaged. So then getting them to actually, what is it, fit into what we're doing is a whole right. different conversation. Completely How different. easy or difficult is that? It's it's quite difficult and I think mm. that's where the challenge is that you're finding where a lot of external funders um, are seeing or continuously say that you know Africa or African ventures are high risk mm. right but the reality is that we're not modeling it in a way to understand the African business and the African growth trajectory and how we work um, so that it can be a little bit more of collaboration as opposed to here's the funding here are our metrics and milestones you need to meet and then if you don't meet them you know we're going to consider you a fit we high risk though I think it is, there, is there validity in that to some extent mm. right it depends on the industry right and the fact that again it depends on the entrepreneur so uh, because we are more of a collectivist society mm. like on the continent and everyone else kind of takes this individualistic approach um, our way to business building and developing business is completely different. That's right? right. It is slower. It is more communal. It is more trust-based. Even with entrepreneurship, when it comes to technology, um, people are thinking about tech-enabled products, et cetera, et cetera. But the reality is that, you know, we need to make sure that 
um, whilst we're building or creating technology, it still has a human touch because mm. we need that factor of trust. So I, you can't just say we have an app and expect, you know, Auntie here to come and download the app and that's use right. it, mm. right? And that's majority of your market. So if that's mm. not happening and there needs to be these individual touches and learning and education, then that's a slower pace, you know? Mm. And then most of the, sometimes some venture capitalists don't see the need to kind of work or walk through that journey. Mm. In their minds, it's just high risk and we're not bending we're not, you yeah. know, going to to but it to do it this way. But it, exactly. it, it you do have to have some some yeah. wiggle room some because wiggle it's room. different. It's different. We need mm. blended finance. We need collaboration, um, just to understand our market and how we work. And I think slowly but surely we'll get there. And I think these are the conversations that are emerging more and more um, as you're seeing some challenges. But of course, you have the more. Uh, thriving markets like your Egypt and your South Africa and mm. even our cousins the Nigerians. <laughs> right. Listen, they're not feeling us too much. They're not feeling us after that. <laughs> after after the weekend. But you know, <laughs> those are like entrepreneurial hubs that you right. know, are moving and, and thriving. So, the, so, the, so th things are thriving on the continent. Yeah. We just, uh, we're hoping that we can match up again to say our cousins in Nigeria, <laughs> SA, yeah. um, and Egypt and, and the like. Okay, well, well, back to teaching. How long have you been uh, teaching in a chassis for. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm coming up on my fourth anniversary. So four I see. years. Yes, Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is it the case that time flies when you're having fun? <laughs> Are you having fun? I'm having a ton of fun. I think um, it has been amazing to mm. kind of play in the position to nurture the next generation. Mm. I think for me, that's the most important part. And the fact that the ethos of the university is around educating entrepreneurial ethical leaders for Africa is the most powerful, most promising mission I could personally get behind as an educator because now this kind of swells within our students. So it goes beyond just teaching, but effectively modeling this behavior mm. to ensure that, you know, we're getting older. Um, we look young and beautiful today, but well, of that's course, right. the generation <laughs> coming up behind us yeah. are the ones that are going to determine so many of our policies, the way our country grows that's effectively. Right. So how are we pouring into them to ensure that our futures are secured as well? And I think that that's the importance of education that, you know, sometimes may get overlooked, but in this institution such as this, you often find that it's in, in uh, guided across the curriculum, and so mm. that's something I can appreciate. Uh, there was emphasis on ethical. Yes. Um, I, I mean, expand on that for us. Why, why, why is that important? Why is that something to even really think about? Um, one might think, well, I'm sure these young ones, they're going to be entering the business world already with an ethical mindset, but is this something that you actually actively have to impart on students? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're entering into a space that's highly competitive. And when you're driven by competition and ego, um, this is something where it can cause you to do something without integrity, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why we continue to fall into these challenges that we see, you know, that limit our, hinder our growth corruption. as a country. Corruption, right? So when we're getting to this point of corruption, that does not just, you know, it, it's not something that just starts, uh, how do I say it, for, it's not a short-term thing. This is a long-term game. Mm. And corruption will disrupt and destroy all of that. So if we don't have anyone that's willing to do the right thing, even when the most money, the most jewels, whatever is placed in front of them, then we're going to continuously fall behind. And we're going to be in the position to continuously um, be in debt and continue to be the ones who are uh, asking for help. Yeah, and being called hi high risk, high risk. <laughs> right. whilst we're at it. Whilst but take us a few steps back. Have you always wanted to teach, get into education? Was this the path? What did you study at uni? How did you come to be in this position? So, yeah, I think um, let's talk about purpose. So I think purpose wise, you know, I am a woman of faith. So I think God has always intended for me to teach in some way, mm. um, even though that wasn't the way that I started. Um, my mission was just around how do I help people? Okay. Um, and so that was important to me growing up. Um, thinking that I was initially like a good old Ghanaian going to be a doctor. Okay. Right? <laughs> I'm going to be a doctor in a different way, but you know, mm. I thought I was going to go into medical practice because I thought that was the way that I can help people. Um, and then it transitioned where I thought I was going to get into law. Okay. And then I actually started working with um, 
a not-for-profit that focused on training public defenders. Mm. Um, and essentially, when I got into that space, I was developing their programs. I was trying to understand um, our legal system, essentially, in the United States. And, you know, the travesty that happens to people who can't afford an attorney. Um, and that really kind of broke my heart. But then I realized how much I was supporting on the back end of building these systems, building these programs, and helping such a nonprofit to scale from, like, 400000 USD in operational budget to over a million with the programs that, as a young age, helping to implement craft design and monitor. Mm. And so once I did that, I said, okay, there's something here about building. And realizing that they were a startup, too, I was like, I need to understand more business principles. I okay. was getting into it, and then that's kind of what curved my decision to go to business school, do mm. my MBA, um, and then transition even back into helping people. So I came back to another nonprofit after working there for five years, um, and this nonprofit focused on financial inclusion and business development. Mm. So I came on board as a business development manager where I was working with low-income individuals, teaching them how to start businesses. Um, and then because we focused on financial inclusion, we were talking about credit and money management. And from there, we were just building them up right through those particular resources. So they would come through my training program, the entrepreneurship training program. And then from there, they would actually um, go towards accessing particular funding or financing that could fit them. Um, and so from there, I was wondering what does, this was me in the United States, I was like, what does entrepreneurship look like back home? Mm. You know, why, why, seen, why were you curious about what was going on back home? It was interesting because I saw that entrepreneurship was like the bedrock to kind of uh, an economic shock, right? Mm. Where you see these are the individuals that are creating the jobs. These are the individuals that are shifting um, essentially their own communities, right? Because if you start one shop here, you hire someone, you hire multiple people, they get a job, they get educated, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a ripple effect. And I'm saying to myself, if everyone keeps calling us this developing economy or this third world space, then what is it that can actually, again, create that shockwave? And I said, let me look at entrepreneurship. And at the time, years ago, I didn't kind of see enough readings on that or work mm. or literature that I could understand what was happening. And so that's really what swift shifted my mind to academia, to ask the right questions, research them, to get a response and then contribute to academia and the research space around um, investigating things that are important to me um, and to my people. And so that's kind of where I switched to academia completely to say, let me be a contributing voice to this space to add on to what has been done by those who came before mm. me. Um, and so that's really what prompted me to come back home um, and do this type of work. And teaching was kind of uh, a side of that, which was the fact that now beyond just researching and, and learning, I'm now imparting wisdom into the next generation and doing it through entrepreneurship and pushing them to think beyond um, their kind of uh, constricted or analytical form of thinking, but really kind of figuring out how do we solve the world's greatest challenges and not feel limited by our age. Hmm. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Well, ta tell us about uh, our. How long has that <laughs> been going on for? Um, and it's 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 another hub. You have yes. how many how many women? It's just so, for, yeah. how many women at the moment uh, that. That are in this hub absolutely so it's um more of a digital platform a digital hub right okay and so um with our we started that we launched it last march okay and so we had a session so coming up to a, a year almost old. a year ah. a little baby just coming along <laughs> um and so with the platform we have about 100 users on there so far and ultimately they're all from all over so it's not just ghana so okay. we have a mix between again cousins in nigeria mm. go to voir because we well, have go check to see if they're still on they're there, still there. <laughs> they might have left by now right <laughs> But, I'm, sure, I'm sure they're still there. They're getting good value. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So with that particular platform, it's really a space, not only just for women, um, we also encourage men to join the platform okay. because we have um, proponents of the platform that allow you to mentor, coach, or work with an entrepreneur. So mm. if you were trying to figure out, how do I work with another woman entrepreneur? Here's how you can do it, right? Um, so the system itself in this first, we always call it an iteration, is just kind of this baseline of saying, how do we first get women somewhere where they can communicate with one another, find one another, and have a system that's helping them on the back end to structure their businesses. Mm. So there's a, a whole element on the platform called Learn With Awa, where depending on where you are in your business, you can use these tools to actually understand how to formally structure your business, because that's also another aspect that sometimes funders are saying they're not ready, right? It's always a red tape. You didn't do this. You don't have this information. You don't have the governance structures uh, ready. And so there's that uh, value proposition for the um, 
the funders that we're supporting the due diligence, right? Mm. We're doing that for them on the platform so that they can see this is something that's, this is a business that's ready for us. Mm. And so um, the next iteration, um, which I'm raising uh, for now, is the fact that we want to incorporate again this form of predictive analytics that can essentially be able to support the women entrepreneurs that are on there. So as soon as you create your profile, the system automatically matches you to what you need. It recommends okay. this mentor, this coach. Um, this is a person that could be a good partner. Here's someone that might be a good fit. And these are people that are all already on the platform, right. on the hub, exactly. not external sort of right. sources. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So this is what, you know, the next iteration of the system is going to do. Mm. And then we want to incorporate like a credit model as well. Okay. Because a lot of times, again, the challenge is is that back end readiness where mm. people are saying we, we don't know if we can trust them, especially okay. if a woman doesn't have collateral, et cetera, mm. et cetera. Mm. So how do we create measures on this on the platform itself to create like a credit uh, worthiness system um, that supports and, and kind of puts that star rating on a, a woman's profile to say this is how good they manage money, et cetera. And then the next level for funding, because I told you we need blended finances. That's right. Kind of taking this SUSU approach where mm. the women are able to now, it, it's not on there yet, but it'll be the next feature, are able to, you know, share money. So they'll put in money and then That's another woman exciting. will That's exciting. So all done on the platform. All done on the platform. You can raise capital, exactly. put money together, put money pull there, resources. Pull together exactly that's very exciting so that is Jewel. like the end so next iteration so as i raise more we've just applied for another grant so as okay. i get more funding to put this in because you've got to hire the tech mm, you know the people to mm. build out this vision so that's definitely the next level and so we've been learning from the women that are on the platform now how are they using it how are they interacting um and hopefully you know creating this so that it again it's not something that's done in isolations but other hubs systems can use this platform it's not just for us to say, oh, this is the our mm. product. It means now we can take this to Kumasi Hive. We can take this over here to iSpace. We can take this over here to all of these particular spaces that support entrepreneurs and say, use this as um, a catalyst to support your women as well. Exciting stuff. Time check. It is some five minutes to the top of the hour, 10 a.m. You're still live here on 3FM Sunrise. On 3FM 92.7, it's another exciting installment of a woman premiere. My woman premiere this morning, Jewel Thompson, lead hour owner eco launch that's the which one is that one so that's another one right oh my goodness Girl, we tired. could <laughs> we could go on and on because on and there's on. also um lift yes which is another one what what how, what, what, what do you do for fun jewel I we I go to events. That's how I met I you. don't believe you. <laughs> That's how we connected, right? I mean, okay, to be fair, when I saw you, you had a glass of I'm not I'm not, I'm not going to expose you, but you're having a good old time, okay? A little something. Uh, um so you do make time to to enjoy yeah, yourself. I, I mean I try. I haven't done a good job of it. Okay. I've been so focused um for the past few years. But I mean, like you said, when you're having fun, time flies. That's right. So for me it's been like, oh my goodness, it's already, you know, time to kind of come up for air. Mm. Um but I mean I have amazing friends and family that like make sure that you know I'm somehow harmonizing everything that I'm doing um, but it's just that I have a vision and I don't want to stop um, until I've kind of hit that vision mm. and it, it's done what it needed to do mm. so for me that is my fun right now because mm. You got to think about it like what are our legacies right what mm. are we leaving behind that's right uh, for others and it's like if I have too much enjoyment <laughs> right now, then it will not benefit my future children. It will not benefit yeah. those that are coming before, after me. And it's that's what I'm focused on is what can I build for them? Because I mean, the future. I, for the future, mm. because I've had my fun in my teen years and twenties and things like that. That's fine. I've done it, but now it's time to really focus in because we need more of that. You know, that's right. Um, not just from myself, but just as a collective. How mm. can we actually raise up our people, our culture? And if everyone's just having fun. Um, um, then we're missing out on an opportunity to That's really, right. The, really, whole the whole is, world is 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 moving along, and yeah. we have to and we, have, we have to catch up. We, we have don't have up. a choice. We don't have a choice. It's got to be done. It has to be done. Well, quickly about Eco Launch. Tell yes, us about please. that in a minute or so. Minute or so. So Eco Launch was just a vision I had because of the incubator my colleague and I um, so started at the university. Was how can we you know support more young entrepreneurs to launch their ventures or their products globally, right? Mm. So essentially we have our our market here and people may know about the young people that are building here but then how do we make um, African brands uh, something that is also globally demanded and desired and so that's essentially what Eco Launch is about is how do we launch these product products excuse me um, you know more globally and then how do we put an ecosystem around these entrepreneurs so that they get everything that they need in a one-stop shop 
Mm. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Only a minute to go and we're wrapping up saying adios, au revoir and goodbye. But tomorrow is Valentine's Day. What Ooh. are the plans, Prof? Hey, Valentine's Day. Are there any plans? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a surprise coming. Let me put it that way. Maybe there's Is a surprise. Is this a hint to whom it may concern? Yeah, that's, that's it, because okay. I'm pretty sure they'll be listening. Maybe there's a surprise ah. coming. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a, something tells me there's certainly a surprise coming. But you're heading back to campus now. Yes. You've got a full day of teaching. Full day. Very, full day. very busy indeed. But uh, before I let you go, what are you hoping for for the year 2024? Oh, man, I'm hoping for this year to be a year of elevation, mm. um, honestly. And it's just about, you know, taking it just to the next level um so no more for everyone else not even myself no more playing small but really walking in your purpose mm. um and elevating that every every way that you go so that needs to emanate from inside to out so the year of elevation i like that a lot no more playing small, small. you're a big fish make sure you remember that well this is where we bid you adios au revoir and goodbye it's been another truly exciting morning mm.